Both Viltrumites and Kryptonians are the strongest and most feared races in their universe. And it would be very interesting to see what will happen if a Viltrumite Kryptonian hybrid child is born. So, in order to figure out the physiology of the hybrid child, we will have to take a look at the story and biology of both the Viltrumites and Kryptonians. So, in the early days of their civilization, the Kryptonians were a proud warrior race. Eventually, the various Kryptonian houses united into a single nation. Over the years, Kryptonians developed into an increasingly sophisticated society and Kryptonian scientists paved the way for travel to distant planets in order to expand their influence throughout the cosmos. Kryptonians were once born naturally, but this idea was soon discarded in the wake of advancements in genetic engineering, and they ultimately decided to control the population by growing fetuses underwater in orbs within Genesis chambers which provided them with all they needed to survive until birth. They perfected this using a growth codex, which contained the genetic makeup of all Kryptonians. At that point, natural births were unheard of and population control was established. So, the Kryptonian cellular structure is much more dense, resilient and biologically more effective than human tissue. They do not possess superhuman strength levels, despite their enhanced cellular ability without their cellular structure, getting charged with yellow solar energy. Without such charging, their physical capabilities are identical to a human of their height and weight who engages in regular physical activity. As aliens, they possess several organs whose functions are not yet disclosed or understood but they are believed to be part of the source of their biomatrix force field and reclamation aura. Kryptonian bodies also store energy actively within their biocellular matrix as an energy pattern, which is linked to their body's electromagnetic field. This energy powers most of their electromagnetic capabilities such as flight, heat vision and other sight-based abilities while supplementing their physical abilities to superhuman levels. As Kryptonians, their cells function like a super battery, hypermetabolizing specific wavelengths of radiation as fuel to enable living functions and superhuman abilities. Different wavelengths of radiation have different effects on Kryptonian physiology and well-being but their cells cannot absorb or utilize all types of radiation. The wavelength of their home solar system's red sun enables their body to function on an identical level of a healthy human, while the Earth's solar radiation in both its raw and filtered state through the Earth's atmosphere acts as fuel to enable all of their powers. The existence and the constant exposure to proven healthy radiation sources are not required for them to live and utilize their powers, but prolonged periods without exposure to them will require them to recharge in order to live and continue using their powers. Similarities between Kryptonians and Viltrumites Kryptonians have some abilities that are also found in the Viltrumites, such as superhuman strength, but the exact limits of Kryptonians and Viltrumite strength are unknown, but they are capable of lifting far in excess of 100,000 tons. Different periods and intensities of exposure to Earth's solar radiation can cause Kryptonian strength to fluctuate over time. On the other hand, Viltrumites get strong by fighting. Their strength is not affected by any kind of radiation. They need to train and fight to near death state in order to get stronger. Kind of like a Super Saiyan. Both species are capable of moving, reacting, running and flying at superhuman speeds. While they are not as fast as the speedsters on their planet, Kryptonians and Viltrumites can fly at speeds faster than light and are considered one of the fastest beings in their universe. They can use this power to disarm opponents, catch bullets or shrapnel 
and cross vast distances in seconds. Kryptonian bodies are nigh invulnerable due to their superhumanly dense cellular and anatomical structure and this same thing applies to Viltrumites. Both of these species are also nearly immortal. Kryptonians can live almost indefinitely if they reside under their continuous exposure to a yellow sun's sunlight. On the other hand, Viltrumites normally don't die due to aging because almost all the Viltrumites die in battle. But their natural lifespan is extremely long and can extend to hundreds of thousands of years. Both of these species are capable of traveling through space at high speeds for days or even weeks without any need to breathe. So there are many more similar abilities but they are common in most superheroes and if a Viltrumite Kryptonian hybrid is born, he is definitely going to have all these abilities. Other than abilities, they also share a common weakness which is being vulnerable to sound frequencies. Both Viltrumites and Kryptonian physiologies are incredibly susceptible to hyper and high hypersonic wave projection, exposures to which have been proven to be fatal even with their physically invulnerable frames. If they are exposed to these high frequencies for a long time, it can cause them serious pain or even brain damage. Let's take a look at some abilities that are not common in these two species. So Kryptonians have incredible hearing at extreme variances of sound and pitch frequency, allowing them to pick up noises from across the globe. They have shown enough control to block out ambient sounds to focus on a specific source or frequency. And this super hearing ability is completely missing in Viltrumites. Kryptonians have also demonstrated that their sense of smell is significantly enhanced to the point they can smell odors across the entire planet. But this ability is not found in Viltrumites. Thanks to their ability to absorb, reprocess and metabolize varied solar ray frequency energies, Kryptonians do not need to eat or sleep and can sustain of radiation for months or even years. Viltrumites can also survive for months without eating or sleeping but at one point they will hit their limit and will need to consume something because their bodies can't survive on sunlight and radiation like Kryptonians. The ability that differentiates Kryptonians most from Viltrumites is their ability to shoot heat vision. Kryptonians can fire beams of intense heat from their eyes. These beams can be made invisible, allowing them to work undetected and can be adjusted to affect matter on a microscopic level. Their eyes also perform various other functions such as electromagnetic spectrum vision, telescopic vision, microscopic vision and X-ray vision and all these abilities are missing in the Viltrumites. So the Viltrumites lived on a planet called Viltrum. Viltrum was a lush, beautiful world ruled by a race of cruel beings with godlike powers. Viltrum had a carbon-rich atmosphere and gravity 1.25 times that of Earth and was twice the size of it. Once rich in resources, the natural wealth of Viltrum had long been depleted. The prime inhabitants of Viltrum are the Viltrumites, an advanced humanoid race of immense physical power and imperial ambitions, who dominate Viltrum and every other inhabitable world within hundreds of light years. Each Viltrumite can fly and possesses incredible strength, speed and invulnerability as well as other superhuman powers. Viltrumites age very slowly as well and end up living for thousands of years. The Viltrumites physical power and immortality have strongly influenced their society, creating a species-wide superiority complex and the sense that they are destined to rule lesser beings hundreds of thousands of years ago. Before they set off to conquer the stars, Viltrum was rocked by a horrific civil war. Those Viltrumites who valued strength and believed in their natural superiority decided to expunge the weak from the planet. 
and sit upon those who opposed them or were deemed unfit in a global bloodbath called the purging. Years later, the planet laid in ruins and half of the population had died, but at last, the weak had been eliminated. From that point on, Viltrumites adopted a brutal doctrine of eugenics, meaning only the strong were allowed to survive on Viltrum. Viltrum was rebuilt by its superhuman population, who then set their sights on creating a galactic empire. The Viltrumites established the World Conquering Committee, an organization responsible for the expansion of the empire. Their pattern was always the same. A planet targeted for assimilation would be offered a chance to willingly join the empire under its patronage. Those that refused were destroyed by an army of flying Viltrumite warriors. So after thousands of years of expansion, the Viltrumites reached their limit. Their supply lines were stretched to the limit and they no longer could dispatch an army to each planet they wanted to conquer. For a time, they used proxy armies conscripted from planets that they had already conquered as invasion forces. But it was clear that the booming rate of growth that they had seen for millennia had come to an end. Then, a new strategy was needed. So some selected soldiers on the World Conquering Committee were tasked with preparing suitable planets for inclusion into the Empire. These vanguards were sent on 500-year-long missions to the targeted planet where they would study the inhabitants, eliminate the defenses, and prepare the natives for the coming invasion. Later, a virus was created by the enemies of the Empire to specifically weaken and kill Viltrumites, and the virus had a devastating effect on the Viltrumite population and ended up killing over 99.99% of the population. By the time a vaccine was available, less than 50 Viltrumites were left alive. This hampered their ability to conquer planets and resulted in their lines being stretched and weakened in the galaxy. Because of this, interspecies breeding, which was once seen as a taboo, was encouraged and vanguards were sent to the planet to scope it out and weaken it. So just like the Kryptonians, Viltrumites left their homeworld and were living on different planets and had children with females from many species. And those children also inherited their innate abilities. So now that you guys know the basics about both the Viltrum Empire and the Kryptonian Empire and what kind of abilities their people had, we can figure out what kind of abilities will a Viltrumite Kryptonian hybrid child have. So basically, if a Viltrumite Kryptonian child is born, I think he is going to be stronger than anyone in both of these species. The hybrid would probably have the best of both worlds, able to absorb sunlight, to have all the Kryptonian powers, and its Viltrumite blood would make it so that they kept their power even without sunlight and would also have their capability to train their powers, potentially making him more powerful than Superman if they have a decent solar charge. It could potentially be insanely dangerous and powerful. There is also a big chance of the weakness to kryptonite being eliminated due to the Viltrumite genes because it is stated that Viltrumite genes are extremely dominant and eliminate any form of weakness found in the genome. On base levels of its strength, it would probably be more powerful than the average Kryptonian or Viltrumite warrior, because without exposure to the sunlight of a yellow sun or when exposed to red solar radiation, the Viltrumite Kryptonian hybrid still has the physical power of a full-blooded Viltrumite. When exposed to yellow solar radiation, the Viltrumite Kryptonian hybrid's power should multiply as their Kryptonian genes come into play and they become empowered by a yellow sun, thus potentially making them stronger than either parent race. Basically, any form of weakness that Viltrumites and Kryptonians has will be eliminated in this hybrid and he will be born with all the best traits from these superpowered species. 
What do you guys think about the Viltrumite Kryptonian child? Make sure to tell me your opinions about this in the comments.